meeting for October 11th will come to order. Roll call, please. Commissioner Abraham? Present. Commissioner Galt? Present. Commissioner Rhodes? Here. Commissioner Wilson? Present. Mayor Kaler? Present. So tonight we have Reverend Laura Gowan here with us from Broadway United Methodist Church to do our invocation. And um, I'm going to ask one of our firefighters back there to do our Pledge of Allegiance tonight. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Laura, for being here. Everyone stand. Please pray with me. Amazing and ever-present God, we come to you on this day with grateful hearts for all who are gathered in this place and the work they pursue for our amazing city. Thank you for opportunities to serve others and for the coming together of this council to work in fair and just ways for a better community. Thank you for the life itself and your call to be involved and responsible in the political arena. With your spirit of love and grace before us, we pray for our mayor and city officials. May they have the wisdom and courage to govern effectively in the midst of conflicting interests and issues. May they truly see the people in this city and know our true needs. May they feel justice in their hearts and find harmony in their differences. I pray for this agenda before us today and the hearts of those who bring their concerns before this council. It is our joy to live and serve in your city and in your world. And it is in your most blessed name that we pray. Amen. Amen. You want to come on up here, one of you, whoever's doing, or all three of you, come on up. All three of you can do it. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to its republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. City Manager, are there any additions or deletions? There are none, Your Honor. So tonight I have a proclamation, and um, Cindy Malray with the, is the events coordinator for the region, and she's here tonight. Um, and um, as soon as we finish here, then I'll ask you all to come up and say something. Um, Whereas, while considerable pro progress has been made in the fight against breast cancer, it remains the most frequently diagnosed type of non-skin cancer and the second leading cause of cancer deaths among women in our country. And whereas, unfortunately, many of us know someone or have family members who have or have had cancer, and whereas, thanks to early detection and better treatments, mortality rates for breast cancer have been radically decreased in the last decade, and whereas knowing what may contribute to breast cancer, symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment are an important part of its prevention. And whereas by educating ourselves and supporting innovative research, we will improve the quality of life for all Americans affected by breast cancer and one day defeat this terrible disease. And whereas we are proud of our local medical facilities that offer early detection options and best treatment centers and the highest quality care. And whereas this month, we thank the caregivers, doctors, nurses, and partners that have dedicated their time in the fight against cancer and are willing to go above and beyond for the people affected by it. And whereas this month, we choose to celebrate the survivors, share the legacies of those who've passed, and stand with those who are still fighting. Now, therefore, I, Gail Kaler, Mayor of Paducah, Kentucky, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2016 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So, Cindy, if you, if you all would like to come on up, and s I'll give this to you. And I know you all work tirelessly to uh, raise, it, raise money for cancer here in our region, which is really critical to us. We, everyone, I will say, in this room has somehow been affected by cancer. And we at the American Cancer Society and the Relay for Life are very proud to be doing what we're doing, and without the community, it'd be a little harder, but every day 
there's something all the time. And we're relaying now year round. At, at one point, we was just a few months. Now it's all the time. But every dollar we bring in goes to research or goes to help folks here in town that need transportation to chemo treatments or to the doctor. So we thank everyone here in the community for all your help, your support, and you may see us on your door someday asking for a donation. So please help us stop cancer. Thank you. Thank you. And of course, we all know that breast cancer is not just a female disease. It can affect males as well. And we have three of our uh, firefighters here tonight. We have Barry Carter with us. And six years ago, they took an initiative to support breast cancer awareness and to raise money for breast cancer. Barry, thank you. You're welcome. Um, what we do now is every month of October, we wear our pink shirts. Uh, we started six years ago, the union, the members, our, our, our employees pitched in and we bought our own shirts just to see how it would work. Um, the fire chief was receptive to the idea and it's good in the community. Uh, we like to give that positive energy to the folks who are fighting that battle, that terrible disease. We think when they see that we'll wear pink, that it, it kind of gives them a little more encouragement. So we're trying to channel that energy. Uh, we've got plans for some other things in the future. I haven't quite got the chief talked into letting us wrap a truck in pink yet, but I don't know if we'll make that. But we see that apartments all over the country are doing wearing pink and, and, and turning their apparatus pink sometimes, some of the more wealthy departments are or locals are they have that kind of money but we're going to do other things just to show people who are fighting that disease that we support them we could do a big pink ribbon on the side of the fire truck yes we Those could sticky kind of magnetic almost sounds like permission to me <laughs> 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 but but we just we're, we're happy to to make a positive impact in the community and, and show that we that we care and we're supporting you're right uh, men are affected by the by the disease mm -hmm. as well and everybody's got family that's what got us to thinking about it you, everybody knows somebody that's affected by that family friends and uh, so we just wanted to to do something I knew um, I, I met a lady who had breast cancer and her husband had breast cancer and hers was on the right side his was on the left side so she said we made perfect bookends <laughs> <laughs> and I thought what a wonderful way to look at that because right. you know a sense of humor will get you through a lot in life so thank you, and, and Chief we, Chief uh, Barnhill, we could also put that on the police cruisers. Also. They've actually, a big pink uh, we ribbon. saw one today, they've got a, a pink ribbon on the hood of one of their cruisers. But I don't, is that one, just one? Just one, they've got one that's got it on it. Okay, well thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank, thank you all. Thank you guys. Yes. That's right. I do forgot that, that we have got <coughs> We'll say prayers for her. I understand. I've been there. So uh, prayers for her. Thank you. So we have a presentation tonight. Uh, we have um, airport operations and audit report. Richard, glad to have you here tonight. I know you're going to give us a very interesting report tonight. Mr. Peterson said chief <laughs> report. But Mayor, Commissioners, Mr. Peterson, thank you for the opportunity to give you our, I guess, our semi-annual update on airport activities. And the board appreciates the city's support throughout the years and the opportunity to keep you briefed. As you may know, the uh, airport authority is a special district governmental entity and it's under Kentucky law. We're the owner and the operator of the airport. <coughs> we run currently five departments. Everyone wears a multitude of hats. We have administrative and marketing. We have aircraft rescue and firefighting. Uh, we have our airfield operations, landside operations, and the police and law enforcement. So uh, we wind up staying fairly busy. We are one of about 600 airports out of about 10,000 public airports in the United States that is certified by the Federal Aviation Administration, which is a requirement if you have scheduled airline service above a certain uh, size aircraft. Uh, one of the primary reasons for my visit tonight is to give you a copy of our annual audit, which the board received just a few weeks ago, had a chance to review it and approved it. 
And I'm ha very happy to, uh, <coughs> to say that the audit is clean with no instances of noncompliance. So uh, we're happy to have that again in that particular configuration. The other thing I'd like to report upon is we are very pleased to report that as of last February, we have paid off all our bank loans and indebtedness, which was accrued in the process of some fairly massive million dollar construction projects, plus covering operational issues. And we go back less than 10 years and that was $1.2 million. So you've helped us get through that particular situation. And so now we're able to come <coughs> back to you and say for this fiscal year, we need 18% less support than we have previously. So uh, we, uh, we came in at $25,000 less than we did the previous year, which will be, I think, the second reduction over about a 10-year period of time. The uh, airport and its tenants, and you may have heard me say this, represent close to 150 employees out there with the tenants and the airport administration. And uh, the activities bring about $43 million into the regional economy. Uh, for instance, if you look at the three car rental agencies, you're looking at close to 150 cars acquired annually, and most of that's right here locally. So that's quite an economic boon. The uh, audit will show you that uh, over the uh, comparison between fiscal 16 and fiscal 15, airport operating revenues rose at 3.7 percent. Regrettably, <laughs> operational expenses rose at 4.1. But we had about $45,000 of unusual heavy maintenance, which was unexpected. And if we disregarded that, the expenses actually would have gone up about 2.2%. We are in the middle of a, a lot of massive construction still, about $1.5 million in projects that have e either recently been closed out or are coming up. Uh, these will include a uh, snow plow with a 17-foot blade, which probably might be the largest blade uh, this side of Louisville in the state. We have electricians out on the field now on almost a daily basis converting 280 taxiway lights over to LED lighting. Mm -hmm. And so that should result in some power savings in the process. Uh, and at the same time, we're coming in and updating our software that electronically controls airfield lighting. Because on top of that, there's about 130, 140 runway lights and I think the last time we counted something like 60 illuminated signs. So there's an awful lot out there on that airfield. We have upgraded our 800 megahertz radio system to comply with P25 standards. I think one of the first agencies in this end of the state to do that. Uh, we have currently also improvements going on to improve airfield stormwater drainage. We're resurfacing starting this coming Friday a project to resurface the Terminal Drive Road, the General Aviation Access Road, and the General Aviation Parking Lot, and we'll also have uh, some street lighting put in. So that's going to be a nice series of projects. Uh, regarding our air service, we're looking now at SkyWest having been here in the Chicago market as United Express for about six and a half years. That represents over a quarter of a million passengers carried between Paducah and Chicago and back in that six and a half years. And that's connected our region to the rest of the world. Uh, we're having a slightly better than average year with SkyWest uh, so far this year on a passenger flow. Their flight completion rate's really been good at 96.6%. So uh, the cancellation <coughs> rate has really dropped. And uh, the essential air service contract that the Department of Transportation has with SkyWest, a two-year contract, this one will expire January 31st, 2018. And that will be put back out on the street for proposals, and qualified operators can then go ahead and propose. Uh, 18 months ago, when it was last let out, SkyWest was the only carrier proposing. They hold a strong market position, and I think there was not uh, a willingness of any competitive carrier to uh, come in on top of them. Interestingly enough, there are 109 public airports with airline service in the United States. And... Uh, Paducah is one of 58 that have a particular requirement because we're within a legislatively mandated 210 driving mile radius of a large or medium hub. In our case, the medium hubs would be St. Louis and Nashville. We're not within 250 miles of a large hub. Memphis no longer qualifies as a uh, large hub. 
Essentially, anyone in this particular situation has to inflame 10 passengers per day, and the average subsidy cost allocated per passenger transported can't exceed $200. And there are about 20 to 25 airports that may have serious problems with this within the next year. We are not one of them. In fact, on a passenger-carried basis of those 58 airports, we currently rank sixth, and in terms of the amount of essential air service subsidy per passenger, we are seventh from the lowest. So we have quite a solid position. And uh, also of interest, uh, SkyWest now is categorized as the sixth largest airline in the United States. And that's over 25 million passengers <coughs> carried annually. Their fleet consists of more than 400 aircraft. So, uh, and finally, they serve 212 markets. So it, it's a large organization. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to give you an answer. Well, you know, I certainly appreciate, I'm sure the other commissioners here too, uh, your leadership, Richard, uh, with the airport. And um, you've got a great board there working with you. And I especially appreciate that we can give you less money because of your great fiscal responsibility at the airport board. Don't necessarily want <laughs> it to be a precedent. <laughs> Richard, I remember those days when I was on the board and, and the debt was $1,250,000. Mm -hmm. It gave me a little heartburn, but I had faith. And <laughs> in fact, I was going to ask you tonight, if you had said something, I was going to say, what happened to the long-term debt? Mm -hmm. It all went away. Thank you. And it can easily come back, unfortunately. <laughs> 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 Just one big thing collapsed, and there you go. The unfunded mandates, as you all are well mm -hmm. aware of, uh, can get to be expensive. Do you have all the fences fixed? Uh, Looks like the fences were always a problem. Uh, fences are in good shape. Oh, good. Keep the animals off the runways. Keeps the animals <laughs> off, particularly the deer. I remember we used to talk about years ago about with the airport lights, the taxiways and runways, about the wiring. Is there, or is my memory faulty? No, we probably talked a little bit about the wiring, and we probably talked a fair amount about fixtures. Yes. So some, some of the fixtures that we are now in the process of replacing probably have 25 years of operational pr history behind them. Now, one thing that we've been able to do, because FAA's adopted a slightly different standard, all our buried airfield <laughs> lighting cables are in conduit. So if we take a lightning strike, and we did have a problem a couple of months back on a repetitive strike, if we find a bad section of wire between two fixtures, you just disconnect, fish it out, slide a new section in, and you're good as new. We really hate to patch cables because that's, that's eventually going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. So that's good. The new lighting fixtures should cut our electric bill on taxiway lights probably by 30 or 40 percent. But with that is the proviso that there's always something that goes slightly astray. The new lighting fixtures, even though they're brighter, it's a different kind of light. It generates less heat. So in the wintertime, snow and ice don't tend to melt off of them, so they have to come with little heaters that come on at 34 degrees to keep the lenses clear. So we'll see on the average how that works out. <laughs> You've seen a lot, haven't you? Uh, it seems like <laughs> Well, thank you so much. Thank you. We'll go on into our meeting. Commissioner Abraham, you have the minutes. I do. I move that the reading of the minutes for the October 4th, 2016 City Commission meeting be waived and that the minutes of said meetings prepared by Lindsay Parrish, Administrative Assistant 3 in General Government, be approved as written. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Galt. Aye. Aye. So we have a resolution tonight, a declaration of official intent to reimburse capital outlays for the flood wall pump project. As uh, everybody knows, we are embarking on a couple of flood uh, wall pump rehab projects and working with the Corps and, and Congress to 
uh, hopefully line up uh, federal uh, matching funds for that. Um, also, um, as you know, we are going to do this first project prior to the authorization uh, in hopes that it will qualify for matching funds for future appropriations. So with that having been said, we've embarked upon the, the process to um, uh, scope the projects and uh, either have been or will soon begin to incur some costs. So uh, prior to uh, the receipt of bond funds to um, pay for project costs, we are doing some things uh, out of uh, a project account where we're putting some cash in that'll be reimbursed by bonds, but we want to make sure that any of those costs that we're incurring now that we're paying out of um, cash uh, can be reimbursed and replenished by the bond fund. So that's the purpose of this resolution is to make those early expenditures uh, bond reimbursable. And so I did um, email Senator McConnell's office today to ask, uh, because several weeks ago uh, before Congress uh, recessed, uh, they passed, uh, the House passed the version of the water bill, and the House bill also includes the authorization increase for Paducah Flood Protection Project. But now the Senate will begin working with the House to remove, resolve differences between the two versions and agree on a final version of the water bill so it can be passed by both the House and the Senate and enacted into law. But they've uh, recessed right now until mid-November. So uh, they won't come back to take any formal action on that until then. But uh, they will be pushing to make sure that we receive um, the authorization increase, which is included in the final version of that bill. So I move that a resolution entitled, a resolution of the city of Paducah, Kentucky, making declaration of official intent with respect to reimbursement of the temporary advances made for capital expenditures to be made from subsequent borrowing be adopted. Second. Thank you. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Galt. Aye. Commissioner Grove. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaler. Aye. We're in subject to the approval of the Board of Commissioners and jointly with the McCracken County Judge Executive I'm doing this right, right? Mm -hmm. I hereby appoint Cal Burchard as a member of the Paducah McCracken County Convention Center Corporation to fill the unexpired term of Kim Rust, who has resigned. This term will expire January 1st, 2017. I move that the Board of Commissioners approve the action of Mayor Kaler in appointing Cal Burchard to the Paducah McCracken County Convention Center Corporation. Second. And we had thre three really good names put forward for the Convention Center Board. Uh, so we want to welcome Kim. I think she's excited about serving on that board. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Galt. Aye. Commissioner Grove. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaler. Aye. Under our motion, Commissioner Rhodes. I move that the following documents and bids be received and filed. Documents. One, quit claim deed with Glen Grove Properties for street, cro street Closing on North 29th Street between Trimble Street and Clay Street. Quit claim deed with TNS Properties, LLC, for street closing of Yop Street between 3220 and 3300 Wayne Sullivan Drive. Agreement with Brad McBride Mack Incorporated for one front end loader refuse truck for the Solid Waste Division. Paducah Water Works financial statements for years ended June 30, 2016, and 2015. Bids for engineering public works 2017 Sidearm Refuse Truck, McBride Mack Successful Bidder, and Stringfellow. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Galt. Aye. Commissioner Rhodes. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaler. Aye. Our municipal order tonight, Commissioner Wilson. Upon the recommendation of the city manager, the Board of Commissioners of, of the City of Paducah order that the personnel changes on the attached list be approved. Second. Hello. Good evening, Mayor, City Manager, and Commissioners. Um, one notable person that's on the uh, agenda tonight is uh, Egg McManus. He is going to uh, be our new 911 director. And uh, Ed has been a, a lifelong resident of the city of Paducah and also of McCracken area. And in course, in March of 1988, uh, he was hired by the Paducah Police Department as a police officer recruit. And then 
after a long and successful career um, and being promoted through the ranks, he did retire from the Paducah Police Department as the rank of captain in 2008. And while at the department, Ed uh, took advantage of the many training opportunities that the department offered uh, through the Kentucky Department of Criminal Justice and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And of course, the areas of his training consisted of leadership, communication, and executive development. Uh, in his final years with the department, uh, Ed went back to school and obtained his bachelor's degree in uh, business management from Mid-Continent University. And Ed put those newly obtained academic, academic skills, excuse me, along with his career experience in law enforcement and became self-employed as a real estate broker and financial advisor. And prior to being invited to come back to work for the city of Paducah, Ed has been employed by the Paducah Ford as a sales professional. And we do appreciate Ed uh, for being here with us tonight. Thank you. Ed, would you like to say anything? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, just foremost and formally, thanks for the opportunity to return to public service again. I'm very excited about it and look forward to the challenges ahead. Ready to go? It'll be a real challenge because we have a whole new department that's been formed and um, can get right in there on the ground floor and um, make a big difference for the community. Yes, ma'am. We'll so we thank you. Thank you. Glad to have you, ma'am. City Clerk? Commissioner Abraham? Aye. Commissioner Galt? Aye. Commissioner Rose? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Mayor Kaylee? Aye. Okay, we'll have our ordinances adoptions. We've already talked about all these, so they go pretty quickly. Commissioner Abraham? I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled an ordinance approving the final report of the Paducah Planning Commission on the proposed final subdivision for property located at 4600 Village Square Drive, 2550 and 2551 James Sanders Boulevard, and 2670 Perkins Creek Drive, accepting the dedication of right of way of James Sanders Boulevard, accepting public utility easements, and authorizing the mayor to subscribe a certificate of approval on the plat. This ordinance is summarized as follows. This ordinance approved, approving the final report of the Paducah Planning Commission on the proposed final subdivision for property known as the final subdivision plat of track nine of Strawberry Hill Development, except in dedication of right of way of James Sanders Boulevard and public utility easement. In addition, the city of Paducah hereby authorizes the mayor to subscribe a certificate of approval on the plat. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Galt. Aye. Commissioner Rose. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaylee. Aye. Commissioner Galt. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled an ordinance accepting the rates for stop loss insurance coverage with Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield for the group health insurance plan for the city of Paducah, Kentucky for the 2017 calendar year and authorizing the mayor to execute a contract for same. This ordinance is summarized as follows, that the city of Paducah accepts the rates offered through Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield for stop loss insurance coverage for the group health insurance plan for the city of Paducah, Kentucky, effective January 1st, 2017. The stop loss rates are as follows. Individual stop loss, $175,000 maximum city liability per person with a monthly cost of $86.52 per member and aggregate stop loss $2,915,561.88 maximum city liability of total claims combined with a monthly cost of $6.67 per member. Further, the mayor is hereby authorized to execute a contract with Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield for the stop loss coverage. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Galt. Aye. Commissioner Rose. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaylee. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. All right, now Commissioner Rhodes. I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance in title, an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute a contract for a strategic health risk advisor and strategic benefit placement services with Peel and Holland Financial Group for administration of the city of Paducah's health insurance. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The city of Paducah hereby ratifies the execution of a contract for a strategic health risk advisor 
and strategic benefit placement services with Peel and Holland Financial Group in the amount of $76,900 payable in four equal installments of $19,225 each for administration services pertaining to the City of Paducah, Kentucky's health insurance. An additional fee of $200 per hour, subject to a minimum retainer of $5,000, will be charged for services requested by the City or the City's legal counsel for issues that arise in connection with employer-employee bargaining, legal matters, disputes, or other similar issues. This contract is for the 2017 calendar year. Second. Steve Clark? Commissioner Abraham? Aye. Commissioner Galt? Aye. Commissioner Rose? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? Aye. Mayor Kaylee? Aye. Commissioner Wilson? I move that the Board of Commissioners adopt an ordinance entitled an ordinance authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement between the City of Paducah and Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The mayor is hereby authorized to execute an agreement between the City of Paducah and Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield as the city's third party administrator to provide claims administrative services related to the city's health insurance plan. The effective date of this agreement is January 1, 2017 and ending December 31, 2017. Second. City Clerk. Commissioner Abraham. Aye. Commissioner Galt. Aye. Commissioner Rose. Aye. Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Mayor Kaylee. Aye. Commissioner Abraham. I move that the Board of Commissioners introduce an ordinance entitled an ordinance accepting the bid of McBride Mac Inc. for sale to the city of one new 2017 sidearm loading refuge collection truck for use by Solid Waste Division and authorizing the mayor to execute a contract for same. This ordinance is summarized as follows. The city of Paducah accepts the bid of McBride Mac Inc in the amount of $250,620 for sale to the city of one new 2017 sidearm loading refuge collection truck and authorizes the mayor to execute a contract for same. Second. Mayor Commission, the pretty self-explanatory on that. Uh, this particular truck we have, uh, this will make a total of four sidearm trucks that we, we will have in our possession. However, one of those will be sold and the third one will be a backup to the two new ones we just recently purchased. This makes the second one. So we'll be running two on a regular basis, and the uh, third one will be a backup, and the fourth one will be sold. So same number of sidearm trucks that are running? Yes. What you have now? Yes. Okay. Two years, let's see, two years ago we were running two sidearm trucks, mm -hmm. but they've, they've aged, and so uh, we've, we've replaced those two but we're gonna keep the best of the two older ones as a backup to the two side arms that we'll run every day. Mm -hmm. And this one wasn't the best? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was over there tramping around and I think I barged on Randy, Cr Randy Crouch unexpected. I didn't know what door he was in and the doors aren't marked and I just, so. But I was pleased because I was, one of the technicians came out and so I asked him, I said, well, how about this drain? He said, oh, he said, it's, Lots of problems. I shouldn't say this because maybe somebody on dot gov won't buy this thing. But it was nice to see that there was good inter interchange, interplay with all the people kind of on the same wavelength of mm -hmm. what's a good truck and what creates lots of problems. Well, we 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 interact with uh, the men, uh, the departments, the divisions uh, to see what kind of things they're experiencing, uh, plus what we see in our maintenance in our maintenance records uh, when we start seeing catastrophic failures and uh, expensive parts being replaced. Uh, it starts eating our lunch, so to speak. We start looking to, to liquidate those trucks. Okay, thank you. City manager report. Well, I just comment um, that several capital projects are in their final stage and we look forward to crossing the finish line, but Every stage comes with uh, uh, challenges and complexities. Um, we, uh, Rick and I, uh, toured the new solid waste transfer station yesterday, met with representatives of the owner uh, to take a look at uh, the progress that's being made. And we are in uh, deep <coughs> consultation with the company about a few things that need to happen yet before we consider it to be uh, operational. Um, of significance and also an exciting note, the Albert Church Road project completion is uh, near and we have scheduled a celebration of that for November 3rd 
uh, at 11 o'clock, and uh, we're going to do that up um, real good. It's been a long, long project, uh, over a decade, Rick, I'm sure, 12 years, 13 maybe. A lot of people uh, involved. Um, we're going to invite all the um, landowners alongside the project that uh, uh, cooperated in right, of, right away contributions and, and sales to the city and, and so on and so forth. So we're going to make an effort to recognize uh, all the contributors to that project. It's a it's a wonderful project, and I know it's been a, a project that's been a big part of your attention and focus for a number of years, and you've made a number of difficult decisions, and we've had some some things done and partially undone here and there, and I think the city commission uh, has remained um, uh, committed to the project and really has made that happen. And from my observation, and I think that of anybody who's been out there, uh, it appears to be a success when you see the amount of traffic that's coming through the road behind the mall especially. And there's no doubt in my mind that if I was coming shopping in the mall area in Paducah from Wisconsin, I would take exit three and come in from the back. So I, I think that notion of whether or not it's going to release some congestion on Highway 60 has already been answered. So congratulations to all of you and your predecessors and everybody that's been involved with that. We all look forward to November 3rd. So hope you all can be there. That's all I have. And you know, when you're out there driving on that road, uh, it feels like it's always been there. <laughs> People get used to that, don't yeah. they? So where will you have the celebration? Yeah, Rick can describe determined? that. Are we going to crack a bottle of champagne over a bulldozer? <sighs> Do we need the big scissors? <laughs> we'll need big scissors and questions. probably several little scissors uh, for that. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, the best way I can describe this, uh, we're actually going to put an insert, a little map insert in, in the invitations. But as you're on the new five lane headed out of the back of the mall, uh, just past, I don't want to give you advertisements, it's just easier, just past Sears and uh, Old Navy, as soon as you get into the clearing there, we will block the, the, the road where people can detour and go around us. But that open country uh, where the road went cross country is where we'll, we'll have that, uh, uh, I guess, recognition and ribbon cutting and we'll be able to still carry the traffic around us. Even though we block the road there, we can get the traffic through. Uh, there'll be a little bit of inconvenience, but they, they won't have to turn around and go back. They can just detour and go take a ride at both locations. So uh, it's gonna be in a, uh, a nice location. Okay. And even though we are sending invitations out to a lot of project partners, the general public is, is very welcome and encouraged to come out and, and join that celebration. I think it's going to be a, a big day for Paducah and McCracken County. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we got a nice note I wanted you all to know from uh, Jeff's wife uh, on the recent death of her father-in-law. Oh. Was it her father-in-law? Uh, her father. Father, I'm sorry. My father -in -law. Uh, but we sent um, a wind chime to her. Uh, and she's talked about how much she appreciated it, and she's bringing it with her when she moves to Paducah, which will be in a few weeks. Yeah, ten days, actually. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. It is. So to, to the people who've asked me why our city manager doesn't live in the city of Paducah, and I, I'll say he's always lived in the city of Paducah. Well, actually, you lived in Reedland for a short period of time, but... I mean, he's always lived in Paducah, so now his wife will be here with him, and that's great. Do we have any commission comments tonight? Any public comments? Meeting's adjourned.